we cannot match the wages of a Chinese coolie. We just can't do it. We couldn't do it in 1800, and we can't do it now. The only people who profit are second and third world nations who manipulate their currencies every day, and transnational conglomerates, which is the Illuminati, which is sucking the life part out of our country, making enormous profits and keeping them offshore. They don't pay any taxes. And so, yes, we need tariffs. These people who talk about it in a negative sense are a bunch of baboons. They just, they don't get it. Unless everybody wants to make $2 an hour in America. That's the trade-off. Sure, we can compete at 2 bucks an hour. Now, someone's going to tell me what's going to happen to the American economy from here if we have to make $2 an hour. And I think the answer to that is pretty obvious. As it is, there are too many people making 10 to $15 an hour. And so free trade and globalization, offshoring and outsourcing has been a disaster for our country, an absolute disaster. And it's going to continue. And part of that story is the illegal aliens and like people from Puerto Rico who are legal aliens. Puerto Ricans can migrate to the United States without having to go through any folder all because it's a dependency or whatever it is of the United States. And, um, and so that just compounds a problem because the ones that come from Puerto Rico, they are ill-educated. Otherwise, they'd stay there and run a business or something. Well, a lot, and, of, a lot of the ones that are on the welfare, they're, they're drug runners, you know. A large majority, not all of them, I don't want anybody to get mad at me, not all of them, but they were, she was telling me a large part of them are just drug runners. I mean, they get, they get caught in prison, they buy them cars, they, they, they drive them up to New York because it's so centrally located, and they come back, they've been stopped, they get their vehicles impounded with drugs, they get sent away from prison, they get out, and they get right back on the system, and they end up buying them. I mean, that was just amazing, you know. And then Governor Rendell is wanting to tax precious metals, and it's just like, you know, it's, it's just, Bob, it's almost insanity. It's like, how hard is it to cut a program? <laughs> or, or well, if they do that, what you got to do is just it. sell your house and, and get out of the state. Huh? Because not all states do that. I mean, you don't have any choice. You got to move to I'm a foreign not, country. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, how hard is it to reduce the, how hard is it to reduce benefits to certain areas? I mean, but but you're being logical, and logic has nothing to do with this reasoning. I know it. It is an edict from the Illuminati. They want to destroy America, and this is all part of how they're doing it. You know, the war on drugs. It's a promotion of drugs that are being supplied in part by the Central Intelligence Agency yeah. and the DEA. What do you think the big fight on in, in, in Mexico is all about? Yeah, I the know. government wants to take over the drug business. Yeah, I know. And the DEA and the CIA are helping them. And that's why you're finding heads all over the world. Because what they're doing is they're knocking off the competition, which is being financed by the government. And they're knocking off the government. They've killed about 3,000 soldiers, most of whom are totally illiterate. And they, they get them down in the jungles of Chiapas because they get tired of climbing trees or whatever they do down there. And it's a very, very, very poor region. I mean, if you make uh, 150 to $200 a month, you've got a good job. And so uh, it's very similar there. And they're doing the same thing in the United States. It's a destructive, deliberate process. I know, and it just gets my blood boiling, and, you know. Here's a question. Well, you can't allow that because what happens is you won't be around to tell the people who's doing what to them. And that's really important, very, 
very important. This, this program is extremely important. People from all over the world contact me. Yes. And so you're doing mankind a great service by doing what you're doing. So everybody out there who does coins should be doing business with Melody because she goes the, the extra mile. There's a couple of others that do as well, but not many, and that are honest. I won't go, we'll go into that. Just to let, excuse me, just to let you know what the stocks did today with gold down, was it 380? Mm-hmm. Uh, I got Agnico up 8 cents. Um, GG down 25 cents. And uh, Mindfight is up 15 cents. And SSRI up 22 cents. So that was the effect I was explaining to you earlier. The stocks are saying, hey, ain't going to happen. This thing's going higher. And so that's a very good indication. And uh, they, they made the call for us a number of times. Um, the um, Helix closed at a dollar today on over uh, almost 3 million shares. Um, getting back to the questions. Yes, I got several. I got number three here. Now hold on. Right. We still got this Ernie here. We got to we got to take care. Ernie sends lots of questions in. Well, we did well, do those questions on Friday, though. Too. All right, you want me to stop using them? No, that's. You want well, to switch to something else? Let's do these, and if we have extra time, go back to Ernie. I got it. I got it. Got yes, it. Master. <laughs> on the Hannity show, they discuss the influential commie czars and. In other words, commissioners such as Carol Browner, Rosa Brooks, Mark Lloyd, David Hamilton, Samantha Power, uh, wife of Cass Sunstein, Cass Sunstein, and John Holdren. These, in addition to Rahm Emanuel, Axelrod, etc., surround Obama and control his decisions. What about them? Your comment, please, on these people. They're all Zionists. It's pretty simple. Uh, all avowed Zionists. And so we have a, a Zionist American or American Zionist government. And they do that with the power of the people who are in agreement with the goals and aspirations of Zionist Israel. That's pretty simple. And that's the end of that. And this came in from Margo. She wanted uh, uh, to mention that Don Harkins of the Idaho Observer passed on Saturday after a short but deadly illness. And she has a question, Mark, after that. I don't know if we have heard uh, if there's anything else uh, uh, to comment on. Well, let me, let me say this. And when I, uh, I correspond with Margo, she's one of our subscribers, she comes up with some great information. I knew about his illness two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. He was ill. And uh, I, was, I was told by our dear friend, Joyce Riley, who was sick today. And um, Sam Bushman was sick today, too. I do both their programs. And, um, but anyway, uh, I find it interesting that Alex, Alex, Alan, Alan Stang... Uh, died of a quick-acting cancer in his prostate. And I, I don't think he lasted three or four months. And, um, you know, when I see this happen to people in that venue, and the editor of the Idaho Observer, I believe he was 43 years old, that is not normal. I mean, I know people get leukemia, at all ages, but an ostensibly healthy man getting in a 43, the odds are pretty long. But anyway, I, I don't, I don't believe in coincidence, and I see one more of them, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to become super suspicious. And I've discussed this with before, with others who, like me, are in the line of fire. 
And uh, I tell them, look, you can stay in the line of fire, but get out of the country. Did he have prostate cancer? Was that his? No, it was no, leukemia. It was leukemia. He had leukemia. And usually, the, the, usually that that takes some period of time, and there's uh, some tr tr treatments that, that delay death. And there are some tra treatments that sometimes uh, do away with le leukemia. I'm talking about accepted treatments. There's others that are uh, outside the normal medical venue that are used that are uh, successful. And uh, but it usually lasts, you know, six months or a year or longer, because I've had a number of friends who 